it's almost winter. I want to talk to you about how you can get fertilizer burn on your lawn, I guess at the end of fall or maybe in the middle of winter or the end of winter without even fertilizing the grass. Now to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to damage my yard, like kill some of the grass. So here's my east facing side lawn. So over here, kind of hidden next to the path tiles here, I'm gonna go ahead and kill some spots off with some ammonium sulfate and some ice melt. For me, this is that teetering moment where sometimes it feels like fall, sometimes it feels like winter. So when you're teetering back and forth between freezing temperatures and fall time temperatures, it's very easy to have green grass. It's maybe not necessarily growing, but it's green and it's not dormant. And that's what I have right now. But in days, my green grass is gonna be sitting right next to a bunch of snow on the ground, which can very easily become ice, depending on when that precipitation comes down. Everyone knows that if you put down too much uh, ammonium sulfate or urea nitrogen, you could burn your lawn and the grass, we call it fertilizer burn. The same thing is gonna happen to the ice melt for the exact same reason. I'm going to put a little clump of ice melt on my grass something that anyone could accidentally do when they're trying to spread ice melt on a sidewalk or a driveway right next to their lawn that's still green. All right, so that's 2.2 ounces of purple heat right there. And it's one ounce of ammonium sulfate that is gonna go down right there. If you accidentally put a little bit of ice melt down, it could do the exact same thing as the ammonium sulfate that I'm also going to put in a little clump right next to it. The ammonium sulfate is totally going to kill the grass because it's gonna be an enormous application for this small little diameter spot. It's kind of like a dog pee spot. But I can guarantee you, and I haven't done it yet, but I can guarantee you that the ice melt is gonna do the same thing and I'll tell you why. Before I get to killing my grass, let's talk about how fertilizer burn happens in the first place. Fertilizer burn is actually the result of salt going into the soil and sucking moisture out of your plant. In theory, this could happen on the leaf tissue and it can happen in the soil itself, sucking moisture out of the leaf or the root. Most fertilizers, especially synthetics and uh, manufactured fertilizers like urea that you'll find in uh, this Scott's starter fertilizer bag or the ammonium sulfate in this bag, have very high salt indexes. So this one ounce of ammonium sulfate, if I'm gonna call that half of a square foot, that's the equivalent of putting somewhere between 20 to 25 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square foot all at once. It's not very much right here, but if you were to do the same rate everywhere, you would instantly kill everything. The salt index for urea is somewhere around 70. The salt index for ammonium sulfate is somewhere around 90. If you're putting down potassium chloride, which is a potassium fertilizer, then the salt index goes up close to 110. The reason why people say you're not gonna burn your lawn with malorganite or other certain products is because their salt indexes are significantly lower. Malorganite's salt index is somewhere around two. Alfalfa meal is also somewhere around two or three. So we're talking significantly lower salt indexes than these products, which are frequently used in the spring to push early growth and the late fall to push late growth. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put some water on this because both of these products are water soluble, but I'm not gonna drench it because I don't wanna leach everything away. We'll come back in a couple days and we'll take a look at these spots and see how, uh, how much damage has been inflicted. And then I'm gonna describe what happened. I shouldn't have done that. This is especially the case when your soil is dry. If your soil is dry, then the salts in these fertilizers are going to be even harder on your grass than they would be if you were applying to wet soil, which you typically see in the spring and the fall. For those of you who care, we're talking about the osmosis process. This is when the salt goes into the soil or under the leaf tissue, moisture is drawn toward it and out of the plant. The only time this isn't really going to happen is if there's more moisture in the soil than there is in the plant tissues. And that's probably only gonna be the case if you're applying to wet, muddy soil, which isn't normally the case in residential lawn settings. Now how this pertains to ice melt is almost all ice melts out there 
use salt. You got to think to yourself, well, if I'm not putting down rock salt on my sidewalks, then what could the problem be? A lot of these bags say magnesium chloride. Well, the thing is, most magnesium chloride ice melt bags are a blend of different forms of salt with a smaller portion of magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is going to be safe for the grass. It's not going to kill vegetation, but very few magnesium chloride bags are actually pure magnesium chloride. Now here are three ice melts that I have in my garage right now. I actually have others, but I don't want to overwhelm you. Here I've got traction ice melt. This says ice and snow melter advanced formula with corrosion inhibitor, safe and economical. The thing is this product right here is a combination of magnesium chloride encapsulated around sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is the more scientific name for rock salt. It's just rock salt. Now, this right here is solar natural salt crystals. This is solar salt, which is basically rock salt, but it's instead of mined out of the ground, it's extracted through a brine and dehydrated through kind of solar evaporation. It's the same stuff. This is just fancy rock salt. So we got mostly rock salt covered in a little bit of magnesium chloride. Now, not to get too sciencey on you, but magnesium chloride is, because it's a chloride, it's going to have that corrosive effect. And this is the thing that people don't like, putting ice melts down on things because they don't want them to damage things that, uh, that the ice melt could potentially be touching. So one alternative to that is this other product that I've got, Purple Heat. Now, I don't know if this is the best one out there, but this is the one that I'm probably gonna be using mostly this year. In this one, instead of being made predominantly of sodium chloride, this one is made of sodium acetate. Sodium acetate is also a salt, and it works very quickly, kind of like magnesium chloride. 92% of this product is sodium acetate. But because 92% of this product is not a chloride, it's not going to have the same corrosive effect as a product like this or this. Now, each one of the granules in this product is also encapsulated in magnesium chloride, just like over here. 6% of this product is magnesium chloride. So you're still getting some of that corrosive effect, but you're also getting a single percentage of calcium chloride and potassium chloride. So 8% of this product has the corrosive effect, but no matter what, we're getting salts in all three of these products. When we're putting down any product that has salts, it's gonna have the potential to damage our lawns if it gets onto the grass. Now, if our lawns are wet, from previous, uh, let's call it slushy rain or snow melt, then the potential for burning the lawn is not that great. However, if you've had a dry stretch towards the end of fall or a dry portion of the middle of your winter and you go ahead and try to put down a salt-based ice melt and you get some of it onto your grass, even if that grass is dormant, if the soil is dry, it's gonna wick an awful lot of the moisture out of the root system of your grass once it gets worked in. And it could have the exact same effect as fertilizer burn, or let's say for instance, a dog pee spot late in the winter that kills one little patch where the dog pees. It's urea, that's the thing. When a dog pees, it's urea. There's a lot of salt in that. In this product, I'm putting down an awful lot of salt. So I've gotta be pretty careful about not getting it onto the grass not spilling it, and especially not having an accident when the soil surface of my lawn is dry. Now for the purpose of this experiment, I'm gonna be using the purple heat because it's got a lot of salt in it. And I'm gonna be using the ammonium sulfate side by side. I'm just gonna put uh, an excessive amount of both for a small little dollop of my land to show you the similar effects that both products are going to have on the grass. Basically, both products are going to go into the lawn. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to get the product into the soil. And then we're going to wait for the osmosis process for both of them to take effect and kill off the grass exactly the same way. Honestly, I don't know which one is going to do it faster than the other one, but I'm pretty sure both of them are going to have the exact same end result, fertilizer burn. All right, it's been approximately 48 hours since I applied the two stuff to the lawn. And you can see some similar browning between the ice melt and the ammonium sulfate. This is not dormancy. This is dying grass.
My guess is it's going a little bit slower because the ground is moist because we're deep in the fall and nothing's really drying out, but it's still happening. I'm gonna keep monitoring this for a little bit to get a proper death before I call this video. All right, take a look at this. 10 days since I applied the ice melt right there and the ammonium sulfate right there. What's interesting to me, the circumference of the death zone of the ice melt is actually wider and less defined than the ammonium sulfate. Just an interesting tidbit in my mind. Like I said, it only took 10 days. It's actually probably gonna get worse over time, but I'm gonna stop documenting it right now. My kid climbing over the fence over there. Say hi, Jake. Hi. <laughs> if you haven't seen my video about what ice melts are best for use around your grass and lawn area, I'm gonna to link to it kind of like right up here over the top of my daughter's head. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and take a look at that. Different ice melts are better for different temperatures and different uses uh, around your property. If I'm putting ice melt down right next to the grass, I'm going to use something different than if I'm putting it down way at the bottom of my driveway.